For a while now, it has been possible to play PlayStation games online with other people through emulation. But last year, a developer made a fork of DuckStation that not only added netplay, but also has rollback netcode that helps the lower input delay with long distance and terminally ill connections. From the onset, this emulator was eventually going to make its way to Fightcade, an online matchmaking application that I've covered on this channel. But there really hasn't been any word on when this is going to become available. It would seem that someone did not want to wait and thanks to their efforts, there is currently a matchmaking front-end application available known as Arcadizia. And I created this video to help you set it up. Currently, Arcadizia is only available on the Windows OS at the moment, though I'm not entirely sure which versions are supported. I can confirm that it does work on Windows 10 version 22H2. Before we jump into installation and setup, I did want to talk about the emulators that are included in this application. A modified version of the DuckStation Netplay emulator is included which supports a ton of PlayStation 1 games, and there is also Flycast Dojo, an emulator that supports the Dreamcast games in addition to the Naomi and the Thomas Wave arcade games. Now it's time for installation. I have provided a link in the comment section below. If it is not installed already, you may need to download VC++ RT. Once you have confirmed that it has been installed, then click download for Windows. This will immediately start the download of the application. Arcadizia does require a manual install, so you will need an application like WinRAR. I've left a link to this application in the comment section. Head to the downloaded application. Open it and extract it to the known place on your local hard drive. To start the application, click on ArcadiziaLauncher.exe. This should open up the initial home page. Enter a preferred nickname and select Login. By default, you will be under the DuckStation Emulator section. The first thing I recommend doing is searching for games that you have and want to play online as not every PlayStation title is available. Click on the search box and type in your game. For this example, I'm going to do a search for Tekken 3. Once you have confirmed the game is available, you will most likely have to convert this game to a CHD. To do this, click on the first icon in the Tools section. This should bring up the File Explorer. Now you want to locate your game ROM. To do a conversion, your PlayStation game has to be in the BinQ format, and you want to make sure both files are present. Select the Q file of your game and then select Open. If it worked correctly, this should open a new window where you'll see a progress of the file being converted. Once it has completed, the window will automatically close and this should bring you back to the application. Click on the second icon in the tool section. This will open up the ROMs folder location in the file explorer and you should see your game. Now you can test the game to make sure it's working. Underneath the action section you want to click on the icon that looks like a monitor. If the game is working correctly it will usually open in an area where multiplayer is available. Close the game for now. If you clear out your search, you should now see the game you're running at the top with a check mark in the found section. Any new game that you successfully add to the ROMs folder will show up here. Before you jump into a game, you definitely want to make sure your controls are in working order. Select Setup Emulator. This will open the DuckStation Emulator. Go to Settings and click on Controller. You can confirm your controller has been detected in this section here. Once you have confirmed that it is present, then select Controller Port 1. Here you can select your controller type. Keep in mind that not all games are compatible with the different types, so if you are unsure just keep this on digital controller. By default the controller is mapped to keyboard, but you can quickly map your controller buttons by selecting it in the automatic mapping option. Once you have confirmed that the buttons have been changed, then close DuckStation and retest the game to make sure your controller and your buttons are set up correctly. Now you're all set to play online. If you want to see if someone is hosting one of your games, click the waiting list section. Under the action section, select the control pad icon to join a game or the eye icon to be a spectator. If someone has already joined the game, 
the control pad icon will not be present. If you want to host a game, click on Create Session and under the Action section, select the Play icon. You'll be first asked to choose a relay server. If I'm correct, it's best to pick the server that is closest to your location. Once you've selected your server, the game will load and in most cases it will directly take you to a multiplayer mode option. You will also be able to invite people who are on the user list to your game. If you are hosting and someone connects to you for the first time, you'll most likely be met with the Windows firewall screen. Just make sure that you give it permission. Another thing that may happen during this time is the game window not showing when you connect to someone. If this happens, go back to the Duck Station emulator section and click the last icon located under the tools section and it should bring up your game window. Setting up Flycast Dojo games are a little different and they don't have the same requirements to run them as the Duck Station emulator does. The ROMs that are recommended for Flycast Dojo are as follows. For Naomi, MAME 0.218. For Atomus Wave, 0.266. And for Dreamcast, CHD files based on the redump set are recommended. Like before, I suggest you do a search for the game you want to play. For this example, I'll be adding Street Fighter 03 Upper. Click on the folder icon in the tools section to open the ROMs folder location. Once it's open, I recommend doing a right click over the File Explorer icon and selecting File Explorer to open a new window. Locate the necessary ROM files and select them. Once selected, do a right click and select Copy or Cut instead if you prefer to save space. Head back to the ROM folder location, right click on the window and select Paste. If you are new to CHDs, then it's important to note that there can be different requirements to get a game to run. The current game I'm using for this example requires me to have two files, a zip file, a folder with the same name as the zip file, and the game's CHD inside that folder. Once you have confirmed that all the necessary ROM files are present and set up correctly, select the test icon. This will bring you to a menu. Select start game to see if the game is running properly. Once you have confirmed the game is working as intended, you can then set up your controls. In the case of Flycast Dojo, there are two ways you can go about this. You can select the test game icon to bring up the menu, which has the setting option available. But for this example, I'm going to go with the second way, which is selecting setup emulator. This will open the main Flycast Dojo window. Select the settings icon and select controls. This should bring up options to the right side of the window where you should see the controller you have connected as one of the physical devices in the list. You can quickly choose to map your buttons by pressing quick map or you can select map. Mapping buttons in Flycast Dojo is a little different than with Duck Station as there are separate sections for mapping buttons for Dreamcast and the arcade hardware. The selection is located at the top right hand of the window. Once you have confirmed and tested your control buttons, you should now be all set to play with someone online and you just have to repeat the same steps that you did with PlayStation games to either join or host a match. Before I conclude, I did want to leave you with one small tip for setting the input delay. This option is currently only available for the Duck Station emulator. When you play with someone using the Duck Station emulator, it will provide the ping. The ping is based on the connection between you and the player and the ping is determined by the distance, speed, and stability of both your connections. If you find that the ping is around 150 ms or above, or you find that the ping is not stable, then you may want to consider increasing that input delay to 2. This can often help to smooth things out a bit more if you're experiencing freezing during gameplay, and most players are usually okay with 2 frames of input delay. Please keep in mind that Arcadizia and the Duck Station Netplay emulator are still in the early stages of development, so you might find a few hiccups, but this is just a process of progress after all. The developer is also currently working on adding 4-player support for games that have this mode available, so there is definitely a lot to look forward to in the future. I really appreciate that there is an app available for PlayStation matchmaking, and hopefully this video has encouraged you to give it a try. If you found this video to be informative and helpful, please make sure to give this a like, and maybe consider subscribing as I will be doing more videos like this in the future. For now, this is The Core, your entertainment techie, signing out.